joining us right now is Paul Zemsky. He's Voya CIO of Multi Asset Strategies and Solutions. And Paul, the market was of two minds listening to this yesterday. On the one side, yes, rates could go higher than the market's anticipating. On the other side, he still continued with that disinflationary kind of uh, thought process, that more dovish tone than we've heard recently. I, I think you're of the opinion that you're going to be looking at the dovish tone of things, right? Uh, <clears throat> absolutely. You know, last year was was just a year of so much uncertainty, and this year we're starting to figure things out. And, um, you know, from a market's perspective, I really think whether the Fed needs to tighten another 25, 50, or 75, it's really not going to matter all that much. It's, we're not talking about the Fed going to six or six and a half, where, you know, a year ago when Fed funds were zero, nobody knew how high they were going to go. A lot of uncertainty. This year we're almost done, and whether it's another 25, 50, or 75, is still pretty close to finished. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's a really interesting perspective. I think it explains a lot um, about why the market's maybe been so bullish the first month and, and into the second month of the year. Um, you, you do see red arrows in the morning a lot. Joe was just talking about this. We saw this Monday. We saw this yesterday where it looked like we were going to open up pretty low. Um, but the market manages to claw its way back. And, and maybe that's just what this is about. We've seen the worst of the rate hikes. I think that's right. And, you know, there are rate cuts priced in at the end of the year. While that seems far-fetched, if the Fed achieves its goal on inflation, meaning, if, you know, core PCE inflation right now is, let's say, four and a half, they get it down to three and a half by the end of the year. That's a de facto tightening because you look at real rates, which are nominal rates minus the core PCE inflator. If that drops by 100 basis points, in fact, the Fed's going to be 100 basis points tighter at the end of the year. So they will have to really consider easing. And the market's thinking about that, too. So a lot of factors go on overnight. But in the U.S., when the market opens, I think people focus on the fundamentals here. If that's your thesis, do you buy into growth stocks? Because those are the ones that have been hurt so badly by what the Fed's been doing. Yeah. So uh, select growth stocks, I'd say quality growth. I mean, you know, companies that have no earnings, we're not going to go back to the, you know, the pre-Fed uh, tightening era of, you know, any stock with a that's... Uh, Web3 or, or, you know, internet-based or anything like that is going to just get credible multiples. However, you know, quality growth stocks that have been beaten down, absolutely, makes sense. Do you think the markets have bottomed at this point? Yes. So I don't see us making a new low in the S&P. Uh, we shouldn't make a new high in the 10-year. You know, the other thing we didn't talk about is mm -hmm. earnings. Everyone keeps expecting earnings to create or that, you know, this is a quarter where earnings are going to get the comeuppance. And the reality is, is that profitability is still high, margins are still high. Um, you know, we're not we're not going to have a deep recession. Even if we have a recession, it's going to be a mild one. So, you know, overall, as an investor, I have to think: if I sell stocks here, can I buy them back ten or fifteen percent cheaper to make the trade worthwhile? Um, I don't really think so. Right, Paul. I get the long-term bet you're making, but what I don't understand is why you're so convinced. I listened to Jay Powell yesterday, like everybody else, and I thought this guy is going to keep going and going and going and going. Well, I guess I would differ in the point of going and going and going. I think, you know, another one or two Fed tightenings makes sense. Um, no, I know that's what you think makes sense. I, yeah. I did not read what he was saying is that one or two makes sense, and that's, that's the end of that. Well, he's also, you know, he's a Fed chairman. He can't lock himself into a decision at this point because the data on Friday was startling. But there's a good chance that employment is a lagging indicator that labor is still being hoarded. You, know, you look at the other parts of the economy, they're slowing down. The, the uh, PMIs are giving close to recessionary readings. So I think you'd want to take the mosaic. If we have another couple of employment numbers like that, then absolutely, the Fed's going to have to think about another hundred, if not more. But there's a And that very, changes your calculus then? Of course no. it would have to, right? It would have to, right? But, but if you look at a mosaic of all the economic indicators, it's reasonable to assume that the Fed's going to let maybe go one or two more times and let the tight financial conditions just, just play out.